Here comes the rapey ice cream man. <laughs> Looks like they got a new truck. Woohoo. Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> back today with my 1956 Beetle Eleanor, which we've been working on this engine that you see down below here. Now this engine has been, um, well, not the engine so much, but the uh, carburetor has been extremely finicky. And I've been playing with it, making some adjustments and some tuning. And I talked about it in the last Q&A video, uh, where I asked for people for some suggestions based on what carburetor settings they would set up if this were either a 1600 or if this were a 1776 using the 34 pick 3 carburetor that's on here. Now, as I mentioned before, these things have been uh, really tricky to me. Damn coil fell down there. I'm going to tighten the clamp up on that. The 34 pick 3s have been extremely tricky to me, and over the years, I really have not had a whole lot of luck with them unless they were set up previously. Usually, if a, a engine had a 34 pick on it and it wasn't running right, if I took it off and ran a 3031, I had much better luck tuning it and getting it straight. But uh, we're going to put a 34 pick on this one just because it's what I had. Now, you remember, I had a brand new one on here, and that one wasn't running all that well, so I replaced it with one that I had sitting on a shelf. Uh, I cleaned it up real quick, put it back together. Uh, most of the carb jetting on this is the same as it was on the other one, but it, it runs a whole lot better, so there was definitely something wrong with the other carburetor. But anyway, people told me to take that idle jet, which is over here, and I currently had a, well, I had a 55, and I actually upgraded it to a 65 just for shits and grins, and it didn't make all that much of a difference. It really didn't. I seem to be having some other issues. Um, somebody brought to my attention that I maladjusted the accelerator pump on here, and that can be tricky because the plus and minus that it shows on that little label on the little tang that's on there, this little screw that's in here, can be deceiving. Plus doesn't mean more more pump, it actually means less. So <laughs> I actually adjusted it wrong. Usually I leave those in the middle, I don't even mess with them. But he says max it out, you know, and that's what everybody had been telling me, but I maxed it out to the plus because that makes logical sense. But in that case, you know, I, I way overdid it. Like I said, normally I put those things in the middle and I leave them there. This one was in the wrong direction. He said, put it all the way towards the minus. He said, it'll make a big difference. And it has. I fired up real quickly and I was able to rev the thing up, which I was not able to do before. And that made a huge difference as to how this thing was running. Um, the idle still seems a little bit finicky. Um, I mean, it does idle. It just seems like it's a little rough to me. The engine seems to shake a little bit. I, I don't understand why it is. I mean, all Volkswagen engines do shake a little bit, especially when you bring the idle down kind of low. I probably should put a tachometer on and just check and see what the uh, RPMs are at and set it per the manual. If it is a 1776 and it does perhaps have a, a hotter cam in it, you know, it will run a little rough, rough at idle. But seeing as how it required a larger jet that's in there, uh, 135, and the fact that I might have to put a smaller air correction screw in it, because that's really all that's left to adjust on this thing, it may prove that this engine is actually a larger displacement than stock. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I asked, you know, to see if there was any settings that you would use for a 1776, and according to what I've been setting up, uh, the engine's been responding better. So that might be what we need to do on here, and this engine just, like I said, might be a large displacement. I won't know without actually cracking the heads off of it, but if I set it up for a 1776 and it runs really well, I'm going to be happy with it no matter what kind of engine it actually does turn out to be the day that I finally do remove these heads from this engine. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get to work on this thing today. We're going to make a few more tweaks and adjustments on here, and we're going to see if we can make this thing run a little bit better. So as always, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please pluck the little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button, so that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net, and I have a Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles and VW Garage, up there on the Facebook. If you'd like to hit me up on Instagram, vvduckvv, and around the middle of the day, I usually release a Q&A video. I typically do that over on my other channel, vvduckvv, so please check out the other channel and throw that one a subscription too because whatever questions you guys ask or whatever commentary you give me I'm gonna to try to answer it in the next video that you see over there and I typically do those around lunchtime every day these videos for tech videos usually go up around midnight so um, I'm gonna see if we can make a few adjustments here so we get this thing to run a little bit better and uh, if we have some luck we'll be back right after this intro thanks for watching <laughs>
Okay, there's been some of you out there that keep telling me that my timing is all wrong. Despite you guys having watched me set the timing at a typical static 7.5, people are telling me that it needs to be set at a maximum of 32 degrees with the timing light. And, um... You guys might be rather surprised at the results because A, I have set it properly, and B, it is showing the correct maximum timing. Now, because you guys don't listen to me and you like to actually see that, we're going to go ahead and uh, rev this engine up, shoot the timing light right at the pulley right there, and I'm going to demonstrate that this thing is maxing me out right at 32 degrees before top dead center. All right, first off, let's fire it up. Set to zero degrees over here at idle, and I don't know how well the camera picks it up. Let's go ahead and get you zoomed in on there. At idle, you should be seeing seven and a half. That's what I'm seeing, at least from the angle I'm looking at it. Looks like it's almost ten, and ten is actually where a typical 009 distributor is supposed to be set at. Let's rev it up. Adjust the distributor a little bit to bring it up to 32, but is it going to make any difference as far as revving the engine up is concerned? No. What I might be looking at right now is just a typical revving problem that 009 distributors have, which is rather typical because they don't advance by a vacuum, which is how the vacuum distributors work. When you hit that throttle, it advances the distributor. The 009 doesn't do that. They advance when they hit a certain RPM. So that's a big advantage to the SDDA. Single vacuum, dual advance. Let's go ahead and shut it down here. And uh, we're gonna go have a look at my distributor that I'm currently rebuilding. And we're gonna be putting on this engine. Yeah, I believe what we're looking at now is either a problem with the air correction screw or a problem with the 009 distributor producing that typical flat spot that they do. Alright, let's go have a look at my other distributor that we're currently putting together. Alright, I went digging through one of my distributor boxes and I dug up everything that I could and uh, after having gone through these here, I discovered that what I thought was a bunch of um, 034 distributors, when I flipped them over, uh, this is a box that I've never really dug through, they all have electrical connectors on the side of them. And uh, when I looked up the part numbers on these things, these are um, Type 4 or Porsche um, fuel-injected distributors. These are not necessarily intended for a, a, a Volkswagen Beetle. They probably will work, but it's not what's meant for this car, so I'm not going to be using them. Everything on this side is a 009. Uh, these are actually real Bosch 009s. That's a nice thing. Uh, even though they are 009, still to have a Bosch one is better than these aftermarket Chinese ones. And this is one of them aftermarket ones. And you probably say, hey, why do you have a box full of 009 distributors? That's because nobody wants them. Everybody wants to use a vacuum advance. Now, I do know I have some more distributors around here. I don't know where they're at. Uh, we'll chalk this one up for, you know, I probably should have dug through these boxes before I started recording the video. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, for, for letting you down in this video. This is another one of those times that I just I should have been more prepared. Now, I do know that I have an 034 currently in the Type 3. That's going to stay. I'm not messing with that. But I do have an 034 that I use for a backup in that car. And I was actually going to release a video showing what I carry in my car for backup parts in case I do have a failure while out on the road. And I've never been stranded anywhere. The only time I ever got stuck was because the fuel gauge wasn't reading properly in the Type 3. 
uh, and actually ran out of gas. <laughs> so usually I kept a you know a one gallon can or something in the car just just for that purpose uh, when I first get a new Volkswagen, just because you don't know what it's going to do. And that was one of those cases where um, I just was ill prepared for it and I did get stuck. So I had to make a phone call and get somebody to bring me some gas. Well, once it started up, though, I drove it home without any problems. But everything I've been able to fix in the field, anything that's ever stopped me or got me stuck, I was able to repair, and that's because I carry a good toolkit. Now, I'm not going to be releasing that video anytime soon. Uh, VW Life actually did release exactly the same video one day before I was going to put it up. So I'm going to be sitting on that one for a while because I'm not a jerk. I don't want to steal his viewers. Uh, we're definitely going to share that video. It'll be coming up sometime in the next few weeks. But let, let's let his video, if you haven't seen it already, go over to VW Life. But let's let his video get some viewers on it first. He's kind of a new channel, so uh, let's, not, uh, let's not take away the limelight. He's doing real well over there, and I suggest you check him out. But anyway, back on the distributor nonsense over here. I've actually got some electronic um, electronic ignition kits in here, so I can work with that stuff. I don't know if this stuff is any good. A lot of this stuff I've gotten from other people over the years, and I just started to throw it all into one box. And somewhere I have actually a five-gallon bucket in this garage, or perhaps even in the spare closet in the house, that has more distributors and carburetors in it. So I'm going to dig those up, too, and see what I've got in there. And hopefully I have another 034. If not, I'll steal the one from the Type 3 uh, recovery kit. And I'll stick in 009 in there. Because I think a 009 would certainly be good for use for a backup distributor. So I'll get one of these tested and uh, put it away in the uh, car for exactly that kind of usage. Anyway, besides the point, uh, we're stuck on the distributor situation today. Looks like I'm not going to be swapping out the distributor. And sorry, just sorry. Let's go ahead and pop off the top of the carburetor, though, and have a look at the air correction screws that are inside of there. And let's find out exactly what we've got in there, and uh, if I should play with it. And I probably should richen it up a little bit, which means a smaller air correction screw. Alright, inside of this carburetor, bolted up to the machine, we had an ADZ air bypass jet. And in that brand new carburetor I had, I had a 75. Uh, both of them are clean, so neither one of them is having trouble breathing. Uh, I was rather surprised to find the 75 in that brand new carburetor. Typically, I believe these are bigger in a stock engine, or at least this is what I've been told with some of the people that I've talked to. But on a 1776, typically you would want a smaller air jet, and right around 80 is the correct mark. So if this is a 1776, it should be performing best with that. I suppose I could experiment and throw the 75 in there and use a little less air, which would, of course, make more fuel. And uh, I don't think that would hurt, but I think we're going to do that another day because right now it's about 40 degrees out here and the temperature is falling. And I'm not comfortable, and I think I've had enough for the day. So we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this thing up. So as always, you guys, thanks for watching. You know, please give me that licky likey and that thumbs up. Please click the subscribe button. Don't forget to pluck the little dingle belly next to the subscribe button. and we get updates every time I upload a new video. And I'm sorry for the lack of enthusiasm or energy. I feel like I'm kind of forcing myself to work on this thing. I just really don't want to in this weather. And just, it's been wet and humid, nasty. Everything in the garage was soaking wet the other day. And now that I'm actually out here and I had a chance to work on it, uh, I, I don't seem to have the parts that I want. And I uh, just... You know the deal. So, anyway, I'm going to ask you guys to please like my video anyway. Please comment. Please subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button. And we get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out Viva the Duck VV where I do my Q&A. That's right. So any of the questions or suggestions that you talk about here, we're going to try to address over on my other channel. Now, I'm going to be busy for the next few days. I'm going to be doing a lot of... Um, a lot of service work on computers coming up, uh, so it's going to keep me really busy. So I don't know how many videos I'm going to get up, at least until the end of the week anyway. And the end of the week is looking like it's going to be really, really cold and rainy, and those are two things that I'm not really wanting to deal with. So we'll do the best that we can to get videos up, so please, as always, you know, ask those questions and give me those suggestions, and we'll get the Q&A videos up, as we usually do, right around lunchtime every day. Thanks for watching, you guys. Really do appreciate it. We'll be back soon. Take care. just had to come out here and uh, get a little video of the sky and I don't think the uh, camera is going to be doing it any justice here but the colors are just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous here let me see if I can adjust some of the color settings here in this thing see if there's anything that I can do to it to pop these colors any more than they are otherwise it's gonna go into post-processing but everything out here is just glowing this this orangey purpley color just beautiful color 
absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I tried to change a couple settings on the camera here and I don't know if that made any difference. But uh, if I didn't have all those trees behind my house, you guys would really be getting a treat right now. The sunset is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and get back in the garage and get something done here before it gets completely dark. There it is, check out that sunset. Absolutely gorgeous, incredible. If I had more time and I knew that was gonna happen, I would have got down to the beach and gotten some, some video of that. I mean, that's just absolutely incredible. Of course, the fucking dog has to be barking the whole while I'm trying to record a beautiful sunset. <laughs> Story of my life, right? Yeah, that's how it goes. Here it is, full lunar eclipse of uh, January 20th. The night of. It's almost midnight, so it's almost 21st. That's about as close as this camera can zoom in optically before it goes into digital zoom. Well, no, that's optical. I guess I still had a little more and didn't realize it. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Come on now, focus on that moon. Now I am into digital. Come out of there just a little bit. <clears throat> That's as close as it gets with optical zoom. Yeah, well, it's certainly gone orange, and it's going to probably be getting more orange before it finally blackens out and disappears completely into Earth's shadow. <laughs> Fascinating. Really, it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Signing off.